this is Manmade Mead. Today we're going to be testing um, what I'm going to call this the ultimate yeast test. Now I'm trying eight different yeasts with one different mead recipe. That mead recipe is just real simply a traditional mead. So uh, what I did, and I'll show a little clip as I'm talking about it, is I basically made a giant uh, traditional mead. I used roughly about 13.4 pounds of um, alfalfa blossom honey as well as six gallons of water. And I still have some of that um, left, but then I mixed all of it up and, uh, and I put in these half gallon jars that are in front of me right now, um, I filled them up basically. So uh, each one of them has the same recipe in it, the same amount of sugar content, literally the same must. And I tried to make sure that was consistent. I went ahead and also took a gravity reading. So this is my, my gravity readings over here. It turned out to be 1.070. That's my starting gravity, meaning that I can get up to 9% uh, total if my yeast can take that cap. But here's where the real test comes in. We're gonna be testing um, eight different kinds of yeast. And I have them all right here. There's, uh, I also need, I've got some notes on each one of them. So I'll run through real quick all of them that I'm gonna be using. So uh, I will be using, let me just name them all, the Lalvin 71B, Lalvin D47, uh, Lalvin EC1118, Lalvin K1B116, the Red Star Premier Rogue Yeast, the Red Star Premier Classic Yeast, the Red Star Premier Blanc Yeast, and um, last but not least, just our straight up normal bread yeast. So let me tell you a little about each one and kind of why I'm doing this. The yeast make a huge difference when you're make a huge difference when you're making a mead. It really depicts um, kind of what flavors pop out when you make the mead ultimately. So uh, when you're making one you need to to try and find a yeast that's suited to the product you're trying to make. So some of them are like better for fruits, some are better for traditional meads, some are better for high ABVs, like if you're going up to 14, 15 to 18%, some are better for low ABVs, a bunch of various things. Let me tell you a couple uh, little things about them, make sure you don't run into this. Um, so let's start with, I've got some notes here that I wrote down to tell you about each one. The Lalvin 71B, which is this guy right here. Uh, you can kind of see it maybe. Um, Lalvin 71B, it's five grams. Uh, all of these are five grams, except for the bread yeast. The 71B is also known as Narbonne yeast. If you've never used it, you might see it in that name. It's 14% uh, ABV. Uh, it is a great traditional all around mead yeast, um, I would say. Then the D47 is another one, is a very common yeast to use. The ABV is 14%. It's great for great for uh, ripe, like tropical fruits and citrus flavors, um, and honestly, just traditional meads in general. I've had a lot of success using it. The EC1118 is uh, a higher ABV mead. It goes up to 18%. It is, uh, a lot of people use it for start restarting fermentations. In general, you use a higher ABV yeast to restart fermentations because they can actually do that. They have a greater tolerance, a greater strength. Um, this one's a great one for traditional meads and all around yeast in general, or meads in general. K1B116 from Lalvin is another 18%. It's a great traditional, um, but it also does really well with like floral flavors. I use it a lot for like apples and um, anything citrusy, um, anything that, that's in that regard. Uh, next, we're getting to the Premier Rogue yeast. Let me grab it right here. It's this guy. And uh, it is a 16% ABV tolerance. It's good for fruity flavors and berries. Um, I've never used it before, so we're going to find out how that one is. Then the Premier um, Rogue, where is that? Premier Classic, this one, Red Packet. Uh, is a 13% um, and what I found interesting about that one when I was researching is that it keeps the mead color uh, more clear. It, like, it, it doesn't take away any coloring over time, which is interesting. The uh, last one, or second to last one, Red Star Premier Blanc, 12%, so that's a little lower than what I normally do, but um, it ferments very dry and oftentimes people use it to carbonate um, soda from what I'm seeing here. And then the very last one, uh, bread yeast, which you can use. It's just your straight up normal yeast. Um, a lot of people do use it for fermenting and uh, that can get up to like nine to 10%. It's a little less consistent in my opinion. Um, it has some different flavor profiles. The big thing I wanna test here is what flavor profiles pop out. So what I've done, separated them all out. This is all my must. These are all five grams of yeast. Five grams is way more than I need for half a gallon. I really only need maybe one gram. So what I'm gonna do is just use a little part of each one of these. So uh, 
Oh, and then, sorry, I forgot to mention too. After that, after we put the yeast in, um, I bought these jars at Amazon, and they of course came with lids like this, you can see, and they did not have the hole. So what I had to do was drill a hole, and then you can buy this in, these things called grommets, which look like little bitty uh, rubber discs. I'm trying to get an example one for you. Little bitty rubber discs that you can place into that little area where you can put your airlock so it seals well. Um, so I'm gonna be doing that, putting these on top in the end. So let me go ahead and just put all of my uh, yeast into these real fast and then I'll be right back. Okay, so um, I have all the eight, eight of them here, everything mixed in, airlocks on. What we're really testing in this ultimate thing is the different flavors that uh, each yeast produce because, excuse me, in reality, each yeast does produce a different flavor um, and does different things with the ingredients you give it. So I'm really wanting to, to find that out and um, obviously performance too of yeast, like how well do they perform in this. I'm not shaking these up. Uh, I'm just gonna leave them as they are, and then the yeast will start to go. The big thing is uh, I want these to be consistent. Consistent um, temperature, and I know that some of them, each one of this, them has a different temperature range. So in reality, uh, that, you know, that can be an uh, affecting factor in how they, well they perform. However, for the results of this test, I'm gonna leave it at the same temperature, no, nothing different. Um, also, uh, the same ingredients, same recipe, all that stuff. It just has to be, you know, controlled, so to speak. The independent variable here is the yeast. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting these away, and uh, I'll do a little documenting of the fermentation of them all. My goal is to put them basically on on here, and you can you'll see them over time as I talk about them, and uh, you know as their progress. But we're going to find out hopefully and probably couple days uh, when they start fermenting, um, what ferments faster, you know, anything like that, any business like that. And if I've done my job well, then these uh, airlocks will start bubbling. If not, then there might be a bad seal. We'll just be able to see. The good news is they're all clear glasses, so I can see what's happening. I'm gonna go ahead and put them up here, and then um, I'll be back in a few days with a couple more, uh, you know, updates on what's happening with each one. Okay, so I just finished a, um, a quick gravity reading on these guys. It's been 11 days since they started fermenting and um, some of them have been really active, some of them have not. And I haven't done all the progress as you can see, um, or you know, you've seen. I did go ahead and add yeast nutrient to basically all of them. I added the same amount, which was half a teaspoon, um, to each one to make it fair and so that the fermentation would continue to grow. So here's the current stats of where everything is at. Um, this guy, surprisingly, the, most of the Lavin products here are settled out. 11 days in, they're at 1.000. Um, however, remember this one's at 10.07 to start. This guy, so uh, we had 1.04 for this. The bread yeast is about the same, 1.038, almost four. Uh, the red star is doing okay, 1.035. Then this uh, premiere is the same place. Like these red stars are not doing as well as I would hope, and I'm kind of bummed about that. They're not moving along. However, the K1V116 is, you know, it's finished, 1.000, it's leveled out. Same thing for the EC1118 and the D47. The only one that's not doing super well right now is the Lauvin uh, 71B, and that guy is at 1.04. So really our highest gravity is 1.04 after 11 days, and they're still fermenting really slowly. Um, I don't know exactly what that means for the fermentation, if it's because of this room, if it's too hot, too cold. Um, I don't know necessarily. Again, this is a um, keeping everything at the same temperature test. So um, I'll be back soon. I don't know how long it'll be until the next update but that's the current standings after 11 days. Okay, so here is, this is 221, uh, February 21st. We started these on February 5th. So it's been 16 total days of fermentation. And I gave you an update a few minutes ago, or last time. Uh, OG was 1.070. One, uh, 1 Some of these are taking a long time. So like, for example, looking up here, 
the this is right here I know you can't read that top label this is the Lalvin 71B and it's not quite done 1.020 the Lalvin D47's completely fermented out the Lalvin EC1118 is almost there 1.010 K1B1 is fermented out now the Red Star is a little underwhelmed with at least in performance this is the Premier and it is still 1.035 so it's only done half of the fermentation in 16 days it's taken a long time uh, Red Star Premier Classic 1.030 same thing bread yeast surprisingly pretty successful 1.010 and uh, the Premier um, sorry this is the Premier Rogue this is the Premier Blanc get that right and this is at 1.0325 I'm a little underwhelmed by these Red Star yeasts they're just not performing very well um, so we'll see. I'm gonna let these still ferment for like a week or so and hopefully um, these guys maybe finish We'll find out and then maybe clear up. I don't want to do a taste test when they're all Very yeasty because then it might mess up the flavor this the taste of it a little bit. So I'll be back soon Okay, the day has come for us to go ahead and do a taste test of all of these different yeasts combinations, so um, I have them all here all eight of them Last update I gave you was about almost three weeks ago, and some of them had not finished fermenting out, which is fine. Um, others had, and uh, so the big thing is like the Lavin products basically had all finished fermenting out completely, um, and now with some more time, everything has finished fermenting out pretty much to uh, to 1.000. Uh, I'll go ahead and put the different ones here and, and show you, but basically this Red Star. Um, this is interesting to me. This thing is the most cloudy of them all. It is just not clear and uh, it took a long time to ferment as well. This thing is currently at 1.002, like, so almost level, almost 1.000. Um, the bread yeast uh, fermented out to 1.000. The Red Star Premier Classic uh, fermented to 1.01, .01, which is not quite out, so it'll have some residual sweetness. The uh, Red Star, what is this one? Um, Premier Rogue went to 1.005, again, almost 1.000. Uh, the D or the K1V116 from Lalvin was completely fermented out. The EC1118 completely fermented out. The D47 completely fermented out. And of course, the uh, 71B can, uh, actually went dry. It's about 0.995. So it is um, below that which is interesting. But that EC1118 is a champagne yeast, so it's very strong, and it literally ate every sugar it could, which is cool. So let's get a taste test. I'm gonna start from this side. Here's my hydrometer I've been using. So um, the let's start with, on the very end, let's start on the dry side of things. This is the EC1118. We're trying to see what the different flavor changes have occurred, like what, what these taste like with the different yeast. So, um, okay, the, um, I have a feeling all of them are going to be at least kind of yeasty because they're still kind of fresh fermentations in a way. The, um, that's a very good, like, what I think traditional mead tastes. It's very yeasty. Um, hmm. Oh, it's got a little floral note. Yeah, that's, um, it's really smooth. And I think that uh, it's, it's hard to compare exactly what the differences are because this is test number one. So I'm going to kind of compare as I go along. That's the EC1, or sorry, that's, I said EC118. That's the 71B. Um, and that's not a champagne yeast. This is a champagne yeast. The 71B is not a champagne yeast, which is interesting. I don't know why it went dry. Here's the uh, D47. Very, very different smell. Interesting. This smells way sweeter. This has more of a... Um, alcohol smell for sure. Well, yeah, that's a different flavor. Um, more, it's bitter, which is interesting. This is that D47. Um, it, uh, it definitely has a traditional mead taste. The honey character is there. Um, but there's more honey character so far in the 71B. Yeah, this has more rounded character, rounded taste to it. It actually tastes sweeter even though it's drier than this one. Interesting. 
okay? Not, a, not the biggest fan of the D47. Uh, EC1118. Ooh, wow. Everything smells so different. This thing smells sweet. It has a, um, has a very clear, like, honey smell to it. And such a drastic difference in taste. Holy cow. You get that honey character. Um, so far, I'm liking the, the um, EC1118 for honey character. Yeah, that, that um, definitely, definitely has a, a more rounded honey character. It has a little more heat on the alcohol side, but it's definitely retained some sweetness in that character of the honey. And I think it's, uh, I think the big thing with the D47 is that it is a fast fermenter. It picks up and goes, which is a good thing, but also means that those yeast chew through everything so fast. And sometimes that's not great because they don't develop the character or taste of that mead honey character that you want. This thing though, I'm liking this. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, this is, this EC1118 is really close to the 71B. It's a little sweeter, has a more rounder taste to it. A little more alcohol, heat. Okay, now we're back to the beginning realm. This is K1V116. Again, another one of these that just takes off, which is kind of unfortunate. My phone's going off. Very smooth, very smooth. Honey character is there. Um, kind of muted honey character though. Got a um, alcohol smell, more alcoholic smell to it. Mm. Yeah, it's not, um, I don't know, it doesn't have a, got a good honey character to it. I don't think this, maybe it was this honey specifically, but this K1V116 just did not, did not con uh, collaborate well with the honey that I've been doing. Um, yeah, so this thing, uh, so far this EC118 has worked really well for honey character, at least in a traditional mead sense. Now, we're not discussing yet the um, side of like berries and fruits and other things, so that's just kind of fine. But um, yeah, this D47 and this, this V116, which I use quite a bit, I think they're fast fermenters and they just, they take over and they can sometimes ferment almost too quickly and get like bad characters um, out of certain things. Camera's freaking out. Okay, moving on. Here's the Red Star Premiere. Um, this is the Rogue. Now, you notice, you might notice the K, the um, Lava products are all pretty clear, especially um, these two. So, um, I don't I don't know what necessarily if that's just a yeast have dropped out of suspension or they've had more time. I do know that a few of these um, finished fermentation earlier, so they've had more time to uh, drop, like for things to drop out. Okay, definitely more honey character in this Rogue, in the Red Star Premier Rogue. More smell at least. Holy cow, that's so much sweeter. What's the, interesting. This definitely has more of a more sweet taste. It's only 1.005, so it doesn't have much, but I think the rounded honey character of it is much sweeter, um, has retained sweetness, and has not chewed up all those sugars, or has chewed up the sugars, but kept the flavor. I'll say, I don't even use much of the Red Star, but I'm a, I'm a decent fan of this, um, of this Rogue. It has, uh, it's really smooth. It does not have a lot of uh, yeasty taste to it, and also, it really just has a very nice, it's retained that honey, I keep saying character, but that's what we want when we are making a mead, is you wanna have the retention of honey and what that provides to the mead, because that is what mead is. So this is, this is pretty good. So far, my favorites have actually been the uh, Rogue and the EC118 and the 71B, in that order. The Red Star Premier Classic now, this guy, is at 1.010, not quite leveled out, guaranteed sweetness. Does not smell as sweet as the, um, as the Rogue, which is interesting. Hmm. Definitely doesn't taste as sweet either. This one burned through more of that honey character and fermented quickly. Um, what was, I'm curious. So I think part of this the Red Star Premiere, and the reason this thing is holding more of this honey character and taste is because it took longer to ferment, which means that it fermented slower and did not blow off as much of the uh, honey aroma. And that aroma is what holds a lot of the uh, flavor for us. 
So this thing, I think, firmed it out pretty quickly. No, I actually didn't. I'm not as big a fan of the classic. It's not bad, but it definitely, um, it's got a good, like, rounded, like, traditional taste, though. Not very, um, a lot of heat from the alcohol. Hmm. Yeah, that's actually really not too bad. That's another one of those of my favorite. Again, I've not used a lot of Red Star products, but that makes me want to try more of them. Okay, so I'm going to uh, skip over this one for now. This is the bread yeast. I'm going to get to the last Red Star product, which is the Red Star Blanc, which is the cloudiest of them all. Interesting. You can see here, this thing is very, very cloudy. I'm guessing it's going to be very yeasty tasting. It smells very sweet. 1.002? This is confusing my nose. Interesting. It smells so sweet. It smells like a... Um, like it's a it's way sweet meat in general. Okay, yeah, yeasty for sure. Very um, mouth feels way different because that yeast has not dropped out of suspension. Um, I just I don't know. I uh, hmm. sweet, a little more burn from the alcohol. Aftertaste is um, very similar to the rest of them. I think the biggest thing distracting me with this one is generally that it has more of a yeasty flavor. So it's hard for me to completely judge this on, on that. But it's still not bad. I think when that yeast drops out of suspension, we're gonna get a better flavor from it. Um, not bad, I like that, that Blanc is pretty good. It did take a while to ferment though, which is interesting. And last but not least, the simple, simplest solution is, uh, is the, Bl or not Blanc, is the bread yeast. So bread yeast is just simple. It's what we use for you know making bread and, and even just some meads. So, uh, this is dry smelling, has more floral notes. I'm getting more of those from it. I'm not getting um, a ton of honey character, more fl flour, which is interesting. Mm. Mm -mm. Okay. Ah, that thing is so dry. Leveled out, but oh, no. Oh, there's no honey character. There's no, mm, it's like alcohol, just straight more alcohol taste. Um, there's like not, it doesn't taste like mead. Ooh, I'm not a fan of that, of the bread yeast. It, it's not, it's not retaining mead character. It's not retaining honey character. You get the, on the nose a little bit, you get some, some floral scents, but it's a really just a heat. I'm just not. Yeah, I'm gonna figure it out. Okay. So, I'm, I'm very surprised by this because honestly, I knew there's a big difference between yeast and um, what, you know, what they do to a mead, but this is such a vast array of like characters. And I must say that I'm very impressed by like these red stars. Um, probably my favorite has been the Rogue so far. Mm-hmm. It's retained probably the best honey character, best taste, uh, natural taste for a mead. And I, I will remind you that these things started at 1.070, which if I'm not mistaken, is only about a 9% ABV. I'm just looking at my hydrometer. One, was, yeah, it's about 9% ABV. So uh, none of these should have hit their cap and they all should have fermented out. The big thing that I think I've noted is because these red stars have fermented a little slower, I do believe that there is a, a big difference in how much um, the yeast have kicked out that aroma of the honey, which is, again, a big part of the flavor. So I'm a big fan of that. I still love um, uh, Lavin products. The D47 and um, the K1V1 did not impress me very well with a traditional mead in this sense. I've used them for other things and they've worked really well. but they did not impress me in this sense. Uh, the 71B and the EC118 were, they were better. They're definitely more alcoholic. Um, I'm just getting my reference again. But they're, they're pretty good. The Red Star Premier uh, Rogue and the Classic and the Blanc all turned out pretty good. My least impressed is the bread yeast. Very flat tasting, not very good. Um, if I were to pick a yeast to recommend to you, uh, I think based off of these results alone, I, I would highly recommend because it gave probably the actual not too sweet of a flavor, rounded mead character, 
This uh, <clears throat> Red Star Classic is pretty, pretty good. And this is the, the Rogue is also good. I, I do also recommend um, the uh, 71B and the uh, EC118. They are two meads that like, or two yeasts that work really well. So yeah, I, which is interesting. Now here's what I'm gonna do with these is I originally in my brain, I was like, what do I do with eight mason jars um, of mead? And so I had it in my brain, I was like, well, I can just combine them all together. And I don't think I wanna do that. I don't really know what I'm gonna do quite yet. But that's the end of this test. The big test that we ran is does yeast really affect the flavor of your mead? And this, I mean, if uh, this is evidence to me. Uh, you weren't able to taste these, but it is a drastic difference of flavor for each yeast. And that's just because yeast operate in different ways and they do better in certain circumstances. So um, the, you remember the variable here was the yeast. I kept all the temperatures the same. I kept the same yeast nutrients. Um, it's the same recipe. Everything was the same. It was only the yeast variation. But this was a really fun test to do. My conclusion is that there is a massive difference between your yeast flavors. So uh, try this for yourself. Try various yeasts. I know that I use a lot of Lauven products, but now I'm definitely going to start experimenting more with these Red Stars because they do pretty well with these meads. And the Lauven, um, they do a lot of stuff with wine. So I think it makes more sense. The Red Star also does stuff with wine, but I think they also gear well towards mead, as mead too. So only one I wouldn't recommend in my opinion is bread yeast. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It just didn't impress me too much. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been a really fun experiment. It's taken um, about two months to do this video. So uh, I hope you hit like and subscribe because this took a while and a lot of patience and planning and video editing and all that stuff. But uh, this has been a lot of fun. I will of course be back with some more mead, uh, Mythbusters ideas and things. And, um, I hope you will uh, join me for some of those. So hit like, subscribe, check out the links down below if you want to support the channel. Um, I'll be back with some more content later on in the future. And yeah, so thank you guys for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful day. And uh, with that, of course, cheers.